Last time we sorted a bunch of people by birth year descending and within the same birth year by surname ascending and that worked quite beautifully. Unfortunately, the idiomatic code with the juxt allocates two vectors per element comparison and what I didn't realize at the time that my proposed solution, sort by birth year descending, surname ascending, allocates two array seeks per key comparison. So depending on how often the keys are the same, that could be even worse. But fortunately, array seeks aren't quite as heavyweight as vectors. Vectors have their own arrays and array seeks share an array. Okay, but nevertheless, let's try to understand the problem. So here's the code from last time. And here you can see for every um, key comparison, we take the keys orderings and to structure them into the first key, the first ordering and then the rest. And this will allocate two additional um, array seeks. We can even see that in the macro expansion. So the first call here is responsible for extracting the key. The next call will uh, get everything after the key and then here this first call will get the ordering and the next call everything after the ordering and these two next calls allocate um, array seeks. Okay, um, so how can we solve this? So assuming that most of the time the first key will probably d be different. So if you pick two people at random, they're probably born in different uh, years. So if you just extract the first key ordering outside the comparator, then we should have much faster code in the majority of cases. So we simply introduce two additional parameters to the by function and then we copy paste the let if um, for the first comparison and only if that gives us a zero. So if the birth year is the same, then we enter the loop with the destructuring um, here. Okay, and that's probably good enough for most real world cases. But of course, we could go further and say, why stop at uh, the first one? We could also extract the second and the third, and we would do that with multi-arity functions. Um, so here we have the trivial case where there is only one key ordering. So that would be, for example, descending birth year, if we don't care about the names, or if we care about the names, that would be, that would look like this. So here's our um, descending, no, I'm sorry, descending birth year. And if that is the same, then ascending surnames. Okay, and maybe we also care about the <laughs> the four names. Uh, if there are multiple people from the same family, then we would have the um, descending birth year, ascending surname, and ascending forename. And we could keep going up to 20 parameters or 10 key ordering pairs. But of course, nobody wants to write that code, right? <laughs> that would be um, quite boring. But we can already see an interesting pattern. So for the last key ordering, we can simply have this one line of code. And for the other key orderings, we require a let and an if and the else value. And for the first one as well. So here, a let and an if and the else value. And we could generate that programmatically via macros. <laughs> so let's look at that next. So here's our first macro. Now by is a macro instead of a function. It takes an arbitrary number of keys orderings and it's only responsible for generating the function header, if, the, if you will. So just function that takes two parameters and then the rest is handled by another recursive macro that you, that you don't see yet. Okay, and there's lots of weird symbols here. Maybe let's look at the first um, expansion here. So if you say, by birthday descending surname ascending, what is actually generated by um, the macro expansion process. Okay, so here is uh, the function that is generated. So instead of a pound, we get a followed by <laughs> some random number and additional stuff. So this is just basically random names starting with a and b. That's what a pound and b pound means. And then the invocation of by star, you can see it here. So a pound and b pound again is a with this random stuff after that. And then the keys orderings, which would be birth year descending, surname ascending, is simply uh, spliced into here. So that's um, presumably exactly what we want. Now let's play with these weird symbols. What would happen if we get rid of the pound signs? Let me compile the macro and expand again. Then you can see 
that the A and the B are now resolved in the macros namespace. So basically a, a global var in the user namespace. And of course that doesn't exist. Instead, we want to use the function parameters here. <laughs> and if we got rid of the pound signs here and the definition of the function parameters, then of course that would look um, like this. And this is illegal syntax. You can't namespace qualify local bindings such as function parameters. So if we try um, to compile and macro expand, then we get basically a syntax error, right? Yeah, so function did not conform to spec. <laughs> that simply doesn't work. Okay, so for local bindings, always use these pound signs to generate random names. What about these weird characters? Let me get rid of both of them, compile the macro and then macro expand again. Now I can see just with the A and B case, here keys orderings is resolved in the macros namespace. And again, there is no um, global var keys orderings in the user namespace that simply doesn't work. So if we want to inside the syntax quote, which basically says this is a template for the code that the macro has to generate. If inside the syntax quote, we want to access parameters of the macro, then we have to unquote them. And you do that with a tilde sign. And then we are almost there. The problem is now that the birth year descending surname ascending, which is um, a variable parameter here, which is realized as an array seek, is pasted here as an array seek, basically a sequence as one additional parameter. But what we want instead is four parameters, right? So basically we want to get rid <laughs> of these parents here. And we do that with the splice character. And then we should get four um, arguments again. There we go. Those are four arguments now. Okay. Um, now this first invocation of the recursive by star macro, maybe let's look at the expansion. That would be exactly what is in line 103. That's exactly this marked code. How would that expand? Let's see. So we want to compare against two keys, birth year and surname. So as expected in the code above, before we made the macros, we have a let and an if. Here we have the order for the descending birth years. And if that order is zero, then we have to <laughs> call ourselves again only with surname and ascending. Otherwise, we can use the birth year order. Okay, so maybe let's uh, recursively macro expand this guy as well. That would be with a control key on the keyboard. And then you can see that turns into the trivial case where we only say ascending surnames. No more let's and ifs requires because that was the um, last key ordering here. Okay, and if we used another one, let's say for name ascending, for example, then we would expect this trivial case to turn into another let if. Yeah, and then we get the first let if, the second let if, and then the trivial case for the full name. Yeah, so that would be the third arity from above generated by the macro. Okay, now we haven't looked at the macro yet. Let's do that next. So that would be here. Here's our macro. It has two cases or two arities, the primitive base case and the non-primitive recurs recursive case. So let's maybe start with this one. Um, let's pick the example again without the for name, maybe just, so just it's a bit simpler to understand. So that would be um, that would be the birth year, that would be descending, and this would be surname ascending. Okay, and then our order is descending birth year. If they were all in the same year, then we have to recursively call ourselves again with um, surname ascending. And since there's nothing after that then this arity is chosen and then we have um, ascending surname. That's, that's the code that was responsible for generating the simple case and this one generated the um, recursive case. Okay, um, yeah, that's exactly what we just saw. Okay, so um, <laughs> it's normal when you first encounter macros to get confused by all these special symbols. I would suggest to simply play around with that, uh, see how the macro expansion change if you leave them out. And as a general rule for the local bindings, you always want the pound sign after that to generate random symbols. Um, and if inside the syntax quote, you want to access parameters of the macro, then you need to unquote and if it's a sequence that you want to splice into the current place without it being an extra sequence, then you use the 
um, splicing here. Yeah, and does it actually work? Did we test that yet? <laughs> yeah, it seems to work. Youngest people first, and then the ascending surnames again. <laughs> 